Hey guys, Nitro here. In today's video, we are going to learn how to create constructible objects just like in Battlefield 5. But before continuing and showing you how to create it, let me show you the final result. So here I'm going to have the constructible actor, which is going to be translucent so I can see through it. And I can also go through it without any problem when it is not going to be constructed. And now when I'm going to be able to interact with it, I'll need to hold the button. And while doing that, I'm not going to be able to move, right? And after some time, this actor is going to be constructed and it's not going to be translucent anymore, it's going to be solid color and opacity and I'm not going to be able to move through it. So let me show you how to create this. So before creating the actual blueprints, let me show you the material that I created. In the main material node here, I set the blend mode to be translucent. Then for the opacity, I got a Fresnel node and I added a constant to it that is going to have the value 0.04 and then to this one I'm going to add a scalar parameter which is going to be by default 0 and named opacity and then I plugged it in the opacity pin and then here I'm going to have a constant tree vector with a multiply node and the B is going to be the opacity once again and that is going to be plugged in the base color of course if you have a better material or anything else you can go for it, it's not necessarily to do the same thing that I did here. The main part is going to be the scalar parameter named opacity. Now let's create the constructible actor. So content browser, right click, blueprint class. And we are going to go to actor. And in here we are going to create constructible actor. Okay, let's enter this. And now here we will need to have a static mesh. So I'm going to add a static mesh. And the static mesh for me is going to be a cube because I don't have a custom static mesh. But of course, if you're going to have something like in Battlefield 5, like the sandbags and all that stuff, go for it. That's the best and ideal way to do it. So it's going to fit your game. And I'm going to scale it a little bit on the X axis. And then we will need to go to the construction script. And in here, we'll need to create dynamic material instance. Okay, and the parent is going to be the constructible material that we just created. So basically, let's go a little bit into our content browser and in here, if I'm going to right click on my material, you're going to see here, create material instance. If I'm going to do this, uh, you can see that I'm not going to have the same layout and the UI that I'm going to have in the material itself. So in the instance, I'm just going to have here parameter groups with a scalar parameter opacity, which I can set up, as you can see. The reason why we don't want to have only an instance, to create ourselves an instance, is because let's say if we would have multiple constructible actors in our scene, and we would like to construct only this on the left, uh, its opacity value is going to go from 0 to 1. But because all of these actors will have the same constructible instance, when the value from this opacity is going to change, all of the others are going to have the same value. That means that if we would only construct the left one, uh, the middle and the right one are going to be constructed as well, which we don't want. And so that's why we are not going to do the instances ourselves, and we are going to let the construction script do this dynamically for each and individual constructible actor. Okay, and now, after you set the parent to be constructible, we are going to go to return value and promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this material. And then we are going to drag our static mesh and we are going to set material. Okay. And the material is going to be uh, this pin right here. Or you can just drag your material and plug this in here. So basically, uh, now if we are going to change the parent, the material of our static mesh will change and as well with this, right? And now if we are going to go into our static mesh, you can see that the material is going to be cube material. But if we are going to go in our viewport, as you can see, that is not the actual material that it uses. And that is because we are using construction script and not event begin play. Because event begin play is called only when we are going to play the game, but not, uh, but not when we are going to change something. So basically, from my knowledge, construction script runs and fires only when something changes, whether it be the position, the scale, the rotation, or any of these values. 
And now there are two things that we need to do. To complete our constructible actor, we need to create a new boolean. I'm going to call this can interact with. And we are going to use this later, so I can't explain why we are going to create it now. And make sure that the default value is true. And the last thing that we have to do is to go to our static mesh. And in here, for collision, we will have to have overlap all. Okay, let's compile. And the reason why we're going to have here overlap all is because we don't want to be able to get stuck in the static mesh, we want to be able to get through it. Now we only have to work in our third person character, so let's open this up. And first in the viewport we will need to create a box collision, which will help us detect if we want to interact with something or not. And now I'm going to set this to be in front of our character, and I'm going to set the size of our box. Okay, and now I'm going to go and access both on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. And now first we'll work with the begin overlap. From other actor we will cast to constructible actor. Basically this is going to check if what's going to enter our box collision is going to be a constructible actor and if that is true I'm going to set a new boolean here. I'm going to call this can interact. Okay, and I'm going to set this to be true. And from what constructible actor, I'm also going to promote this to a variable so I can access it a little bit easier. And I'm going to call this constructible actor. And for your information, if you're going to go to the variable type, you're going to see that it is going to be a constructible actor, exactly the blueprint that we just created. Okay, and now from end overlap, we are going to cast once again to check if what is going to exit is going to be a constructible actor, and if that is true, so the cast is going to succeed, can interact can be uh, is going to be false, and we are going to set the constructible actor to be an all set. That means that I'm going to have the value of this variable null. Okay, so basically the reference is going to be nothing. Cool. So now what we'll have to do is to go into edit, project settings. Let's load for a second and go to input and create a new action mapping. I already have mine here. This is going to be called interact, bound to my button. And now we will need to access this. And I'm going to type here interact. And you're going to see here action events, you'll need to get it. So the reason why we're going to have one of these is because we will need to access both pressed and release events. On pressed what we'll have to do is to check if we can interact. And if that is true, we are going to check if constructible actor is valid. And what this does is basically going to check if our constructible actor has a reference to an actor or not. And if that is true, we are going to create a new boolean here. And I'm going to call this can move. By default, it should be true. And we are going to set this to be false. So the name is self explanatory. Uh, we are going to check if we want to be able to move or not. And now let's set this up. On mouse input and movement input, we'll need to add branches to all of them. And the condition is going to be can move. Okay. The same goes for the input axis for movement move forward and move right. Okay. And now just plug the can move in both of the conditions. Now let's compile and let's continue with our blueprint. And now that we set our can move to be false, we need to add a, to add a timeline, which will play the role of lerping between two floats. And lerping is basically gradually changing the value of a float from let's say 0 to 1. It's not going to be instantly, it's going to be gradually, so it's going to go through all the steps. Let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.02 and so on over a period. So I'm just going to call this timeline and we will always want to play from start. Okay, and here we're going to create a new float track. This is going to last two seconds and we are going to have only two keyframes. So from time zero, value zero and one more time two and value one. So as you can see, uh, this is how the float is going to evolve from zero to one on the course of two seconds. Okay, and I think here you can see even the value. 
as you can see it is just going to go up over two seconds now from update what we'll have to do is to get constructible actor and get material and we'll need to set set scalar parameter value let's go a little bit back into our material and in here as you can remember opacity is a scalar parameter and we'll need to copy the name okay we're going to copy this parameter name now we can close the material and in the value we will have the new track actually let's, re let's rename this to float track okay and now from finished what we'll have to do is to set can move to be true once again so over two, uh, after two seconds we are going to set can move to be true once again we are going to set can interact to be false we are going to get our constructible actor and set collision profile name of our static mesh to be block all because by default we set it to be overlap all not block all then we will have to set the constructible actor to be a null set and I think that's pretty much everything we have to do actually we did forget to do something and that is to use the set, the can interact with boolean and here we need to set can interact with boolean to be false and then here at the top where we have the on component begin overlap we will need to get uh, get can interact with and have a branch before anything here okay the true should be plugged in should be plugged in here and the condition should be this boolean and now there's the last thing that we have to do for this tutorial we need to go to released set can move to be true once again because if we don't want to build this anymore we will want to move once again then we will check if constructible actor is valid which does the same thing that does above and if this is valid we are going to get material oops not that so get material the variable set color parameter value the parameter name should be opacity once again and the value should be zero and then after this we are going to stop the timeline okay and if this is not valid we are going to simply stop the timeline okay and now this should work let's go and compile and let's check okay so there's a problem oh yes i press the fan on this okay so we'll need to drag a constructible actor in our world actually let's add more just to test if it is working or not so i can't see my box let's uncheck it in game for now let's play and i think this is a little bit too high so let me move this above just like this and now this should work i'm going to press e i cannot move anymore and now this is solid and i cannot go through it but by default as you can see we can go in the indeed through it and the same thing goes for this one and now let's see what happens if we release our, our button okay so i'm going to release it and as you can see the opacity is once again zero and we can go through it and we can also do this once again and we can just continue to do this as long as it's not constructed and once it is going to be constructed we cannot interact with it anymore as you can see i'm pressing e but nothing happens because we had that boolean here called can interact with so this is pretty much everything for today's video, I hope that you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up, if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with new videos and also if you'd wish to get the project files you can now do that on Patreon and you can also support me to increase the quality of my tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'm going to catch you in the next one, goodbye.